We're back in our study of the extrinsic muscles of the cuirass, uh, ankle, and foot, uh, for that matter, toes. And you know that all term long, I've been an advocate for you using the uh, muscles by uh, region and action. It's way helpful for you to get organized if you take uh, these categories and put images to them. It's way beneficial for your long-term memory and the utility of using those when it comes time to do evaluations of your aunt uh, at a family reunion who's um, complaining of uh, anterior curl pain or uh, someone who has um, felt a pop in their uh, uh, posterior to the posterior inferior to the lateral malleolus and you wonder if they've had a uh, popliteal tendon uh, uh, luxation and uh, so anyway be be a student of where the muscles are where their tendons pass and uh, you're just going to be better off so uh, these two um, sheets are available to you uh, on e-class we want to move into really a combination of looking at uh, muscles by region and we get a clue about their combined action and so the anterior compartment consists of tibialis anterior extensor hallucis uh, longus extensor digitorum longus and the peroneus tertius and you see that all of these muscle tendon units pass anterior to the frontal plane or the medial lateral I said plane medial lateral axis so they're all dorsiflexors concentrically and control the rate and extent of plantar flexion now when it comes to their second action you have to look at where the tendinous attachments are in relationship to the um, the Z axis which is the sagittal axis relative to uh, whether it's an inverter or an everter anything that would attach medially would have a tendency to invert concentrically anything that attaches lateral to that sagittal axis would have a tendency to evert so these are the muscle neighbors in the anterior compartment what they share is dorsiflexion concentrically and then the lateral compartment muscles you appreciate the fact that these two muscles the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis send their tendon posterior to the lateral malleolus and the brevis has its distal attachment at the styloid of the fifth metatarsal so when this contracts concentrically obviously um, it passes posterior this serves as a pulley when this contracts concentrically plantar flexion occurs that's true for both of these but just distinguish where the distal tendon goes styloid of the fifth the tendon of the longest dives on uh, inferior to the cuboid bone and attaches way on the opposite side of the foot so the uh, the longest uh, 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 peroneus longus attaches here tendon passes posterior here and passes way to this blue dot on the plantar aspect of the foot in the basement the very deepest portion of this this is this is really not a lot of people talk about this but this is a guardian of the uh, midfoot because that tendon passes right through here and maintains the longitudinal arch laterally so peroneus longus and brevis are plantar flexors and inverters when you look at it study it some more it'll make way sense to you that uh, they're posterior to the frontal axis and they are uh, laterally situated they're laterally situated in relationship to the sagittal axis so they are going to evert the foot and then the two superficial muscles of posterior compartment 
the soleus, you can see great cross-sectional diameter, so it's able to generate great force, and then the two heads of the gastrocnemius. Taken together, they are the triceps surae, and surae is spelled S-U-R-A-E, triceps surae. Triceps, one, one head, two head, three head, and they share a conjoined tendon, you know, as the Achilles tendon. Well, the attachment site, the distal um, attachment to the skeleton is posterior calcaneus, which you know, which is posterior to the medial lateral axis. So clearly concentric is a major uh, plantar flexor. And then we come to the muscles of the deep posterior compartment. The big daddy of the deep posterior compartment is the tibialis posterior. This is the posterior view. This is the only one of these three muscles that attaches both to tibia and fibula and the interosseous membrane between those two bones. All three of these tendons pass posterior to the medial malleolus and then we're way intrigued by these fingerlet tendons that attach uh, in the plantar aspect of the foot. Clearly because this muscle tendon unit passes posterior again to the frontal axis. This is a major plantar flexor. Now let me quiz you. Since this passes medial to the sagittal axis, what's its influence on the position of the foot when it contracts concentrically? Well, if you're thinking it, if you're thinking clearly, concentric contraction, that's going to cause the foot to invert because this passes to the medial aspect of this axis. So when it contracts, the foot, there it is there, here's the, this, these big red patches right here on both tibia and fibula, tibialis posterior, its tendon passes lateral to this axis, lateral to this axis, so when it contracts, it's going to invert it's going to invert the foot concentrically. Then, just for us to keep track, the three tendons that pass posterior to that medial malleolus are euphemistically called Tom, Dick, and Harry. Tom, T, tibialis posterior, Dick, flexor digitorum longus, Harry, flexor hallucis longus. Tom, Dick, and Harry. And... Um, uh, pretty difficult to palpate Tom, but Dick and Harry are way available to you. There's a groove, a little channel through which these pass. Let me show it to you. They pass right through this channel. Originate, posterior, uh, curus, tendons pass here, flexor halysis goes to that blue dot, flexor digitorum to those blue dots, and the tibialis posterior, look at all these little blue dots. Those are all the fingerlets uh, attachments of tibialis posterior. And then in your PowerPoint, I really love this two-dimensional scheme because it helps explain the muscle motor's uh, effect on foot movement. I'll, I'll say subtalar movement and ankle movement. Uh, talk to you a little bit more about the difference between the two. But if you look at these two axes, we've known this x-axis as the frontal axis or the medial lateral axis. The z-axis is uh, what we've called the sagittal axis. Now think about it. All the attachments of the tendons that are anterior to the medial lateral or frontal axis, all of them are going to dorsiflex the ankle in concentric contraction. Just, please just try it on. It works. It, it's just a wonderful scheme. Everything that has its influence and or attachment posterior to that same axis is going to be a plantar flexor. Everything that attaches medial to the sagittal axis, here represented as the z-axis, is going to invert the foot, 
and everything that attaches lateral to the z-axis is going to, um, uh, uh, I wonder if I did this right, invert the foot, and these that are lateral will uh, evert the foot. Now, if you put in an axis that's not here, pretty tough to do in three dimensions, the longitudinal axis, things that pass to uh, across this, if, if, I, if I put this axis in like this, everything that crosses to one side will tend to rotate uh, uh, that direction, or if it passes this direction, will rotate the opposite direction. And the rotational components I've already dealt with in the transverse plane, the combined tarsal movement. So if this is that longitudinal axis, the rotations that are uh, occurring are abduction and adduction, and then return to neutral through all of that. So uh, we'll spend some time on that. I want to share with you that the purposes of the foot are threefold. The first two purposes have to do with just as the foot is coming in contact with the ground, there's an imperative to dissipate the force. Think about gravity pulling our, our, our big mass down onto this weight-bearing foot. And if we just pounded every single step, it would result in overuse syndromes, changes in our bones, joints, um, uh, chronic inflammations all over. And you're built beautifully for heel strike, leading to dissipation through eversion. And then the other thing that our foot does when we're just stepping out, really what I'm saying is we're on a hike. And we're going to go, if we were in Germany and we were at Lake Königsee, um, outside of Salzburg, and we were trekking in the mountains, it's not just a walkway, kind of like a regular walkway here. There's roots and boulders and um, dips and, and uh, streams that we have to ford. We need to dissipate force and we need to adapt to the rough surface or the uneven terrain. Our foot does that early in stance phase. And then once our tibia gets over our foot, we no longer need to dissipate force. So we heel strike. This begins to descend into plantar flexion. We're continuing to move forward. The tibia gets here. We've got the foot all the way down on the ground. And it's now time for the foot to do a new thing. And that is to propel. So if, if you were asked, so what's up with the foot? What does the foot ankle complex do for us? It does these three things. And in class, we're going to practice this so that you get it deeply embedded and you can see if a person is a safe and effective walker. Okay, we'll do that in class. I do want to expose you to this concept, and that is the triplanar movement that's necessary at the foot uh, in order for us to successfully do those three functions of the foot are... Uh, pronation and supination. Pronation is where is going to occur when the calcaneus moves from <clears throat> an inverted position and dorsiflexed to a an everted um, plantar flex position. And that is said to unlock the master joint of the, of the ankle. The master joint is the subtalar joint. Let's come around here. The subtalar joint, meaning the position of the calcaneus, dictates the function of the foot. When the foot, when the calcaneus is way into inversion, it locks the foot and makes it a bony lever for propulsion. When it's everted, it unlocks these and makes this a bag of bones, adaptable for the surface and spreads out force over time and space. So we're less likely to have focal injury. So that's another uh, look at some of the mechanics of the foot. Be student of the foot. Bless you guys. Bye.